Hey guys, Romani here from Banzai with Romani. I hope you guys are doing well. Today I've got an interesting experiment that I want to share with you guys about six different soil components and their water holding capacities and the retention over a five week period. So these are the six soils. Number one is perlite, lecker and worm castings. Then I've got lecker, perlite, worm castings, compost and stone mixture, compost and garden soil mixture. So to make things interesting, before I go ahead with this video, can you guess which one of these six components hold the most water? And then also which one of these is the most stable and consistent with the water retention over the five week period? Okay, so while you guys think about that, I just wanna explain what triggered this experiment. So for me, I've been trying liquid ambers uh, the last few years and I've had uh, minimal success. Uh, for two weeks ago, I replanted a liquid amber, and the liquid amber has struggled quite a bit with uh, water retention. Um, I think the water holding capacity of the mixture was just too tight and it didn't get enough oxygen. So I thought maybe I should test all the components before I make the next basket of soil um, to plant my trees in, and this is uh, why I started this experiment. Um, the reason for this experiment is not only for me to figure out what the best soil mixtures are to use for my trees, but also to give you the tools to help you to optimize your soil mixtures for healthier, thriving bonsai. So just to, before we kickstart the experiment and I share the results, I want to tell you just a bit more about each of these soil components. So perlite, perlite is a light granule material that's white in color. It looks a lot like polystyrene, but actually it's volcanic glass that was heated to a thousand degrees until it pops almost like popcorn and it multiplies to many times its original size. It's lightweight, sterile, easy to handle, and it's long-lasting. Lekka. Lekka is lightweight expanded clay aggregate, or also expanded clay. Um, it's made from heating clay to 1,200 degrees. The heating process consists of heating the gases trapped inside the clay, and it expands, and there's thousands of little air bubbles within this material and that's what make, gives it its porous structure. Worm castings. So we all know what worm castings are. I've been talking about this a lot. I've actually made a video also. I'll put the link um, to this video somewhere over there. And worm castings is basically worm manure or worm poo, whichever one you want to call it. Um, it's when the worms go through compost and they create waste. And this waste is a very good soil in richer. The next one or the soil mixtures I made was perlite, lecker and worm castings which is a mixture of all the small components or the soil components that I've just mentioned um, and I mix this perlite, lecker and worm casting mixture. I take four parts perlite, four parts lecker and one part worm casting so that gives me non-organic and organic matter in the same mixture and this is um, the soil mixture that I use a lot, so it just made sense to kind of find out what the water retention capabilities of this mixture is. The next one is um, the compost and stone. Um, so I read up a lot of books regarding soil mixtures um, and what to use for bonsai, and there was quite a few mixtures where they spoke about um, using stone and using compost, and some of the translations and things go like, um, use small stone and but then people say no small stone is actually a river sand which has a bit more round or it must be sharp edge stone because it splits the roots but all that said the mixture consists of six parts compost and eight parts of stone mix that together and you get a nice consistent mixture it gets a lot of air in and it's also i've used that for a couple of years the only problem that i find with this type of mixture is it further decomposed the longer you use it um, and after a few years like I found out with this liquid amber the roots um, don't get enough oxygen and you start getting yellowing of leaves uh, because there's no oxygen in the soil. Then just for fun I took some compost and garden mixture so this is also I used compost that I normally buy and I take some soil out of my vegetable patch and I've added those one part compost and one part garden soil just to see what the natural soil or mostly organic soil looks like um, if you give it water for, for a week and then let it dry out. How the experiment was conducted. So what I did is I've knew each of these soil types and I put them in a clear plastic cup. 
and I made sure that the volume of each of these cups were more or less filled to the same height. Additionally, I drilled eight holes at the bottom of the cups to mimic the drainage that you get in bonsai pots. Before adding the soil, I actually made, weighed each individual cup before the soil was added, and the minimums or the average weight was about 21 grams per cup. This is very important because the baseline of this makes sure that we have the correct uh, measurements because we need to deduct that the whole time from all the weights that we get throughout the experiment. So week one, the initial watering and the observation. So I'll just give you a couple of, uh, I'm not going to give you a day to day, but I'll do a couple of days in and then mention a few of the weights as um, they were measured. The one important thing I do want to mention is that all of these components on the first day were measured dry, except um, the worm, worm castings. Um, because I took the worm casting fresh out of my worm farm and they weren't completely dry. So that is why whenever I talk in this experiment about the weight and how they increase over time, I always talk about the start weight. Okay. So the first week of the experiment uh, involved daily watering for the soil mixtures and I added 100 milliliters of water every day to each and every one of these mixtures. And then I measured the, the cup before I watered I measured it again two hours later, and then I continued that for every watering. And I only watered once a day. I started off with a perlite, liquor, and worm castings with a start weight of 57 grams. And then liquor, we started off with 122 grams. Perlite, we started off with 19 grams. Worm castings, we started off with 165 grams. The compost and stone, we started off with a weight of 153 grams. And finally, the compost and garden soil was a weight of 175 grams. After I added the initial 100 milliliters of water, the weight of the soil dramatically changed. Okay, the first results that came in, the perlite, lecker, and worm casting increased by 53%. The lecker increased by 29%. The perlite increased by 200%. And 79%. Worm castings increased by 8%. The compost and stone increased by 13%. The compost and garden soil increased by 33%. I continued adding 100 milliliters of water every day for the next six days. At the four day mark, the soil was completely saturated and it was gaining uh, one or two percent. Uh, but that could be um, measuring errors. So I stopped the, and I concluded the first week and said, okay, so the water saturation point is after seven days of watering continuously. Perlite, Lekka and worm casting maxed out at 205% of the start weight. Lekka maxed out at 148% of the start weight. Perlite, which surprised me a lot, maxed out at 479% of the start weight. Worm casting maxed out at 106% of the start weight. Compost and stone maxed out at 144% start weight. Compost and garden mixture uh, maxed out at 163%. Here the key findings for the first week. Perlite was the highest water Retention capacity with a significant increase in weight. Lecker and perlite showed moderate water retention abilities. Compost based mixtures demonstrated relatively low water uptake capabilities. Week 2 the assessment and moisture loss. So, following the saturation, I monitored the rate of the moisture loss of each one of these soils. So day 8 till day 10, the moisture loss were in the single digits. So the percentages were like 4 or 5% per day. At day 12, the moisture loss started to speed up. At the end of week 2, I measured the following percentages. Perlite and Lekka and worm castings were at 163% of start weight. Lekka was at 127%. Perlite at 321%, which is quite a significant loss. Um... The worm castings were at 88%, compost and stone was 121%, and compost and garden soil was at 143% of the start weight. 
So my observations for week two was um, perlite maintained a high moisture content, while other mixtures experienced gradual moisture loss. Lekka and perlite blend showed sustained water retention abilities. Just keep that fact in mind, sustained water retention abilities. Worm casting displayed lower moisture retention compared to other soils, so that although it's full of nutrients, it lost its uh, moisture quite quickly if it was not um, replenished every day. And in week three, I continued monitoring as the experiment progressed. I transitioned to weekly soil measuring, and I didn't track it every day anymore because um, the water loss or the weight loss wasn't as significant as in that first couple of days. So in week three, the perlite, lecker, and worm castings were 128 of the start weight. Lecker was at 113 percent of the start weight. Perlite was at 195 percent of the start weight. Worm castings were at 67 percent. Composite stone was at 110 percent. And garden and compost mixture was 117% of the start weight. So moving to week 4, the perlite, lecker and worm castings was 112%. Lecker was at 106%. Perlite was at 142%. Worm castings at 53% of the start weight. Compost and stone was 104%. Compost and garden soil was at 109 percent. So here's what I observed: perlite continued to outperform all other soil types in retaining moisture. Lecker displayed consistent water retention capabilities. Compost-based mixtures displayed gradual moisture loss over time. The fifth and final assessment in week five: perlite and lecker castings. After five weeks of the experiment and allowing to dry for four weeks was sitting at 105% of the start weight, lecker at 99% of the start weight, perlite at 121% of the start weight, worm castings at 47% of the start weight, composite stone at 101% of the start weight and compost and garden soil at 106% of the start weight. In the fifth week, I've concluded the experiment and reflected on the findings. The perlite emerged as the outstanding the performer and retained the most water and was exceptional over the last five weeks. Lekka showcased stable moisture retention suitable for bonsai cultivation. Worm casting while rich in nutrients demonstrated poor water retention over time. And as I mentioned earlier, the main reason for this is when I got the worm castings out of the worm bin, it was wet and it wasn't measured dry. So I started that experiment with uh, worm castings might having some moisture already in. So it might have screwed the results on the worm castings um, results um, in the experiment. So I might just redo that experiment, test that a bit over time on the specifically the worm castings. But I do feel that it's a good component to have in the soil mixture, um, just not the main component um, if it comes to water retention. So just to wrap up the conclusion, so what I find through this experiment, I've gained valuable insights into water holding capacities of the different soil mixtures for bonsai cultivation. Perlite with its impressive water retention ability stands out as a top choice for creating well-drained yet moisture soil mixture blends. However, it's essential to consider specific needs for your bonsai species when selecting soil mixtures. I hope this experiment has inspired you to explore and experiment with soil components to nurture happier, healthier bonsai trees. Don't forget to check out the full Excel sheet with all the data in our community tab for a deeper dive into the results. Thank you for joining me on this journey of exploration and remember to like, subscribe for more exciting content in bonsai cultivation. Until next time, happy gardening.